The following is a UPN 20 KTVD sports presentation. Brady Phil Savoy. Savoy is fun to watch. He's big, strong, and he can fly. But look out for Colorado State. The Rams also feature a high-powered offense led by strong-arm quarterback Moses Marino and fullback Damon Washington, who enters the season as one of the nation's top running backs. season and we kick off today with a terrific matchup. It will be the 69th meeting but this will also be high, both clubs being ranked in the top 25. Colorado ranks number eight in the nation. Meanwhile Colorado State comes in number 25. It's a terrific matchup in an absolute perfect college football setting. Boulder, Colorado and we'll return to Folsom Field right after this word from Dr. Pepper and local Dr. Otterly. These days it seems like everything is the official something of somebody. What's next? The official soft drink? The team mascot? Look at this guy right here. And this one here. This girlfriend and this kid. See? See, they're drinking Dr. Pepper just because it tastes great. It's kind of the official soft drink of everyone else. Like this guy with the proper. He executes a one-handed switch. You can't coach this stuff. It's a thing of beauty. Hey, who's doing that? I do that. Let's go ahead. When is the official last day of summer? I have no idea. At Sonic, summer's a state of mind. It just keeps going and going and going. <laughs> this month at Sonic, you can get one of our old-fashioned floats or one of our new blended flurries for a special low price. It always feels like summer at Sonic. So we've been Drive into Sonic this month and get our Junior Double Cheeseburger for a special low price. Because of our low fares to the places you want to go, you can spread your wings whenever you want. You are now free to move about the country. We schedule frequent flights. We go places you want to go. We fly so you can too. You are now free to move about the country. Performance, it's my job. You need the right technology. You need the right skills. You need the right equipment. You need the right gasoline. And you need the right motor oil. You need to use your nine iron. Good thing he can drive. Sit go, sirs. Go. Welcome back to Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado as Ralphie Three takes the field. We are minutes away from kickoff between Colorado and Colorado State. Right now, let's send it up to the booth and join the men who will call today's game. That's Ron Thulin and Artie Chicken. Thank you very much, Jim Knox. I'm Ron Thulin along with Artie Gigantino, a man who has a lot of experience coaching football on the collegiate level, such schools as USC, and on the professional level at the Los Angeles Rams. Now, Artie, the last time these two teams played last year, they had combined for over 1,000 yards total offense. Now, they're just as explosive this season. This has to be a defensive coordinator's nightmare. Well, it certainly is. And what's going to happen today, Colorado's got to establish a running game. A year ago, they were an anemic 11th in the Big 12 in rushing offense. They've got to give the ball to Trotman this year 20 times a game. They've installed a two-back offense this offseason. On the other side of the ball, Colorado State rushed for 332 yards against Nevada last week. 
Washington and McDougal, their two tailbacks, each rushed for over 100 yards. In order for Colorado State to win today, Ron, they have got to run the ball effectively against this blitzing University of Colorado defense. Well, Hardy, Colorado State is looking to get a little respect from the Big 12 Conference, but they have had their problems with the Big 12. They have lost 12 straight. In fact, the last time they beat a Big 12 team was 1986. The team they beat, Colorado. We'll step aside straight ahead to kick off the Rams and the Bucks. Ford Expedition is big, beautiful, and exciting. The Ford Expedition is roomy and luxurious. The Ford Expedition is a little pricey. That's right, the Canyon Casino is giving away an expedition every week until October 5th. Get all the details at any Colorado Total location and take an expedition at the Canyon Casino in Blackhawk. Foreign buyers want your Levi 501 jeans. I pay up to $1,000. I buy all Levi jeans. The older, the better, and the more they bring. Don't sell or donate until you talk to me. I'm Marshall, Denver's oldest and best buyer at 3509 West 38th Avenue at King. Out-of-town customers call for shipping instructions. Have cash, we'll spend. An elite task force is about to test the limits of television. From Jerry Bruckheimer, the producer of Con Air, Soldier of Fortune, Inc. Premiering Sunday, September 28th. Andrew Dice Clay is the boss from hell. Why can't you just treat people like human beings? What are you, a girl? Hits. Tuesday night at 8 on UPN 20. Today's game is brought to you by Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut Supreme Pizza for Ken Griffey Jr. I'll take it. I'll run it over to Junior. Mm, ooh, I'll take it. I'll mm, take it. I'll take it. Supreme. Mm. Here's your pizza. Hey! 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 Look at all these toppings. Pizza Hut's new Supreme Pizza with six very generous toppings. Now with everything from fresh sliced mushrooms to meteor pepperoni. Hey! Hey! It's only $8.99. And now get a second for only five bucks. For delivery in Metro Denver, call 751-1111. Welcome back to Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado, along with Artie Gigantino. I'm Brown Thule. A beautiful day in the Boulder area. 81 degrees, game time temperature, just a slight breeze, about two miles an hour. The forecast is partly cloudy, a slight chance of rain later on this afternoon, but an absolutely perfect day for football as we are in the Rockies. I tell you what, Artie Gigantino, we've already had some action as Colorado State was running on the field. One of Sonny Lubick's players showboat a little too much. The flag was already thrown. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Well, I, I'm, I know Sonny's going to have a few words with him about that. And you can understand the young man's excitement to come and play this game. But coming into this game a little bit, Colorado State is overmatched. And you don't want to give Colorado an advantage from the get-go. Now it's a 15-yard penalty, so they were going to be teeing it up at the 20-yard line. C.W. Hurst, the 5'10 freshman out of Sherman, Texas, will be kicking it off. Marlon Barnes on the far side to receive, and Ben Kelly, a speedy freshman out of Menor Lake, Ohio, also back. And Ben Kelly returned the opening kickoff of the spring game this year, 97 yards for a touchdown. Colorado has not returned a touchdown for a kickoff since 1980. Here is Kelly, has a little daylight. Up near the 40-yard line, a 22-yard return, and that's where the Buffs will begin play their first offensive series of the 1997 season, and they are led by John Hessler, the senior out of Brighton, Colorado. Two years ago, summing for Coy Detmer, how about this? Not bad numbers, over 2,100 yards, 20 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. He's 8-2 and two as a starter or a sub. But a year ago, he only threw 23 passes, Ron, and the question tonight on him, is he rusty or not? He said he was rusty. The coaches didn't buy that. Anderson, Stinger, Savoy, and Cheverini. Four wide receivers, one back set for the Buffs. And that is Herschel Troutman in the backfield. Quick three-step drop over the middle. Quick look-in pattern complete. Close to the first down. Hessler has some pressure. Let's take a look at the offensive line. First of all, for the Colorado Buffaloes. And the big man is number 78, Melvin Thomas. And he's the guy that switched from right tackle a year ago to right guard. He'll take you to the ball every time, Ron, if you watch him. Pickup of nine on the play brings up second and one for Hessler. 
Hessler said the thing he was looking for today is to be patient and to remain poised, and he did it on that rush. On second and one, Hessler again. Very little pressure into the flat complete to Cheverini. No, they're saying it bounced. And taking a look at Colorado's offensive backs and receiver, the big guy, number 80, Phil Savoy, the senior out of Washington, D.C. He's the guy, Ron, that they go to on third and fourth down. His completion ratio last year, he converted 16 third and fourth downs with possession catches. This guy is the guy John Hessler loves to throw to when the money's on the line. Well, facing third and short yardage, we see the two back set for the first time. Darren Fisk, number 43, comes in the fullback position. A converted fullback. He leads Trout, and he's stuffed, and he may have gotten it on the second effort. You know, from up here, it looks like he did spin for a first down. And a year ago, Ron, the University of Colorado, on third and seven or less, was 52% successful, which is just outstanding. All right, you're going to see him here. Get the handoff. It's a simple lead play. But what he does an excellent job of is spinning and taking the ball and getting it upfield. Give the tailback the effort on that one for the first down. A good, solid job, though, by the defensive front of Colorado State. Well, it was good enough for the first down, so right at the 50-yard line, Colorado with first and 10. Two wide receivers, a couple of tight ends, and Hessler hands it off to Troutman. Has some room on the left side. Look out. Down to the 33-yard line, a pickup of 17 before Eric Olson, the 6'1 sophomore out of Ventura, California, comes up with the stop. This is a counter play now. The right guard and the right tackle do an excellent job of pulling around and leading up in the hole. The counter play is the most popular run play in all of football today, and Herschel Troutman runs it as good as anyone. Well, the Colorado coaching staff spent some time in, with the Green Bay Packers and the University of Wisconsin working on their running game earlier this year. They said it's a two-year evolution, and they want to really improve that part of their game. Hessler's big pressure. Still on his feet, lets it fly into the flat and is complete to Cheverini. Darren Cheverini, the junior out of Corona, California, with his first reception of the year. Adrian Ross and Clark Hagens really put pressure on Hessler. That was a good job by Hessler that time of maintaining pause and avoiding the rusher. Most quarterbacks here would panic. But one of the things Rick Neuheisel says about this guy, he's got great poise in the pocket sitting on the bench last year helped him do that good throw and good catch and besides that Hessler is a very good athlete Tavon Cooper now in the fullback spot the 5'11 sophomore out of Arizona Troutman from the eye and he's got it not much room as he makes his way up to the 25 yard line Willie Taylor the strong linebacker number 45 out of the stop 142 tackles last year for Taylor led the team in that category. Let's take a look at that Colorado State defense and in their line, Adrian Ross, 44, he is the sack guy. All whack last year, 14.5 sacks in his career. He comes off the corner with a lot of authority. And the linebackers, Willie Taylor, who just made the tackle, he is the stud. Two tight ends with Tennyson McCarty and Desmond Dennis. The fullback, first carry of the year, got the first down up to the 20. Devon Cooper on the carry, his first carry of the year. Recruited as a quarterback, now playing fullback. Yeah, the quarterbacks are the free safeties in the secondary for Colorado State. Eric Olson, number 28, he is a solid player. And he is the guy to watch. He was a freshman All-American last year. He had an interception last week against Nevada. He is the quarterback of that Rams secondary. A nice drive for the Buffaloes. First and 10, ball on the 20. Ranked number seven or eight in the polls. Troutman looking for some running room, may have got one. And again, it's clear here, Ron, that the University of Colorado is trying to establish a running game on first down. 
Rick Neuheisel said he has got to run the ball well this year in order to beat Nebraska later on in the year in the cold weather climate in the Northern Division of the Big 12. They made a conscious effort this spring to try to run the ball better. Well, the officials holding things up just a little bit. One thing, Sonny Lubick and also his defensive coordinator, Larry Kerr, were telling us yesterday that if Colorado does start to establish the running game, they're in big trouble. Yeah, because the one thing you don't want to have happen, you don't want Colorado to run for 300 yards on you because the defense of Colorado State is a 4-3, but it's a bend, bend, don't break philosophy. And you don't want to bend too much when the team is running for 300 yards on you. You're bending much too much. There's Sonny Lubick in his fifth year. Toller and Anderson are wide to the right. Savoy on the near side. Hessler, three-step drops. The boy's got it. Fights his way close to the first down. Will be about a yard short for extracurricular activity as Randall comes up to make the stop. That was, that was a three-step drop, Ron, at the line of scrimmage. Hessler saw that the secondary was playing off, and he threw what we call a hitch play out to his big receiver, Savoy. He's got the flexibility at the line of scrimmage. Line of scrimmage. Black from talking to him yesterday, he loved that hit. Because all he talked about when we were talking yep. to him is smacking people. And the guy's not that big. I think he's compact, but he just loves to hit people. And if I were starting a college defensive football team, I'd draft that guy right there. I want him playing for me. First and 10, ball on the 42. Moreno trying to pitch the home run. They're bumping and pushing each other, and the pass is incomplete. Off the hands of Ben Kelly, he was step for step with Darren Hall. Good coverage that time, Ron, by Ben Kelly. Marino just lost the ball up, number one, hoping that his receiver could run underneath it, but number two, if he can't, to try to get interference. But Ben Kelly plays that picture perfect by turning around, getting his eyes back on the ball, keeping proper inside position on the receiver. That is clinic videotape right there for defensive backfield play, Ron. Then Kelly runs about a 10-something hundred, so he does have a little bit of speed to burn out of Ohio, just outside of Cleveland. Second and 10 for Colorado State. Workman moves over to the right side. The big hit put on again by that Colorado defense. Phillips coming from that middle linebacker spot. You know, we touched on it briefly already but they really changed their defense for this guy Matt Russell Butkus Award winner he liked to put his nose in and they try to funnel everything to him they're not doing that to Phillips the middle linebacker position in a 4-3 is an instinct position and this young man hasn't played very much he's a senior starting for the first time so you want to make it as easy as possible for him and the easiest thing to do for that guy is to force the ball outside and let him go chase it down third and eight Moreno steps up in the pocket. Pass is complete up to about the 48-yard line, and we're going to have an interference call on Ben Kelly. He looked like he was all over oh, at that did. time. That would have been short of the first down. But Paul Turner had great position. Kelly had one move, and that was trying to go over the top. I'll tell you what, though, that was a great catch. Great concentration. Pass it. You got a guy all over you, and you still hang on to the football. First down. Now, Paul Turner led this Colorado State team in receiving a couple of years ago. Sat out last year. You know, you see Marino here move around a little bit. He's got good presence when he's moving, but the key to this play is a great concentration by Paul Turner, who, by the way, is also out of San Diego. And Ben Kelly clearly interfered with him, in my view, and that was a good call by the officials. That was two catches by Turner. He bobbled it and able to scoop it into his belly. Minute and a half left in the third. Colorado State down by a couple of touchdowns, but they're on the move. On first and ten, Moreno goes to Workman, the tight end. How about a four-yard gain on the play? It is a nice day in Boulder, Colorado, and we are at Folsom Field on the hilltop for an in-state rivalry, Colorado State from the WAC, Colorado from the Big 12. 
A rivalry that was really heating up in the first half as Colorado State led 14 to 7 in intermission, but with less than a minute to go here in the third, Colorado has taken control, leading by a couple of touchdowns. Second and six. The blitz is coming, and Moreno's going to be done. Mike Phillips came right up the middle. See, this is what Steve Fairchild, the offensive coordinator of Colorado State, did not want to get into. He didn't want to get into a game where he had to throw the ball to win or to catch up because he knew Colorado would come after him. And now Andy Kristoff has adjusted his philosophy again, and he's starting to blitz more. And as you can see here, Marino's got absolutely no chance. But Phillips makes a great athletic move there by jumping over the blocker. That's a great athleticism right there by that big senior who's starting a middle linebacker for the first time. You know, we asked the coaches to describe Phillips, and the first thing everybody said was mobile. This guy can motor all over the place. And that is going to be the end of the third quarter as Colorado State lets the clock tick down to a couple of zeros. We have 15 minutes left in Boulder. Can Moreno lead him back? They trail by two touchdowns, 28-14. Here we are, Shorty. Let's get down to the dirty work. You know, your grandma doesn't think we can do this, but what does she know? What's this? You don't let them put that on you, do you? Is that the way that goes? Where are those pins? Eh. Southwest Airlines' low senior fares give people 65 and over the freedom to go, see, are. and in some cases do things they've never done before. Great googly moogly. These days it seems like everything is the official something of somebody. What's next? The official soft drink? The team mascot? Look at this guy right here. And this one here. And this girlfriend and this kid. See? See, they're drinking Dr. Pepper just because it tastes great. It's kind of the official soft drink of everyone else. Like this guy with the frontward. He executes a one-handed switch. You can't coach this stuff. It's a thing of beauty. Hey, who's doing that? I do that. A commodity is something you trade, not something you drive. The unique Mazda 626. Sporty engineering. Incredible style. A silky automatic. And responsive power. Lease for $219 a month. The most class in its class. Mazda 626. Lease for $219 a month. Jim Knox, Artie Gigantino, I'm Ron Thulin. We have 15 minutes left here in Boulder with Colorado leading 28 to 14. Colorado State facing a third down situation. They are two for eight in third down conversions today. One for four this half. This is a big play for them here, Ron, to convert. McDougal hit right behind the line of scrimmage, and that is where he is going to be stopped. Ryan Olson, great quickness. Big time hit by Olsen, who's already graduated with a degree in civil engineering. No, he's an amazing weightlifter, that guy. He, he has 420 pounds in the power clean, 395 in the jerk, whatever that is, and 255 <laughs> in the snatch when they throw the weights up on top. You can tell I'm not a weightlifter. The bottom line is, that guy's strong. <laughs> that was a heck of a hit right there. He did lower the boom. Colorado State had a good drive. They're forced to kick it away. Troutman is back. High spiral. Troutman calls a fair catch at the 13. 38-yard kick, zero on the return. Now, Sonny Lubick was hoping the game would be close at the end of one, and it was. He was closing, hoping it would be close at the end of two, it was. And the same thing is true at the end of three. It's also good that we could go in there. If we're in the ball game and playing as hard as we can, if things are going well then, that's all you ask for, I think, as a coach. And especially in a game like this against a, 
a powerful football team that we're playing. We can be in there, uh, we're down three, we're down seven, we're up three. Uh, boy, then the pressure starts mounting on both teams. And I got a feeling the pressure might mount a little bit more on those guys. Well, but trailing by two, the pressure's probably on Colorado State right now. Yeah. They need a stop and a big play defensively. Swing it out to Troutman. Crosses the 15 up to the 18 before Eason Ramson ties him up. You know, this is the perfect time in the game now for Rick Neuheisel and Carl Durrell, his offensive coordinator, to really go back and try to establish running the football. You got a 14-point lead here. You're starting to wear down a smaller Colorado State team. Pound them a little bit. Take a look at that two-back offense and see where you're at with it at the end of the game. And they're doing it. They're doing it. Here's the two-back set. Well, everybody's jumping all over the place. Bunch of yellow hankies laying on the ground. Interesting side bet between the two schools. These two schools, as you saw at halftime, very friendly. Dead ball. Ball start offense. Although Five yards, repeat second down. The deal is the loser, the students have to raise money, jog up to the opposing school or down to the opposing school. They raise money per mile. But when they get here, they give the money to the other school for the relief fund, for the flood relief fund. But you've got to kiss the opposing mascot. Oh, God. Would you rather kiss the Ram or Ralphie? I'm kind of a Buffalo guy. I, <laughs> I, I think I'd rather ki kiss my man Ralphie there. Ralphie the third. There's Cam the Ram. I don't know. I'm not sure that's, about him. That's some serious lips on that guy. Hessler, wide open to Anderson. To the 22, to the 25-yard line. That'll be close to a first down before Dennis Randall makes the stop. The junior college transfer playing the quarterback spot. Got a ways to go, but the coaching staff very high on him. But you have to understand, this Colorado State team last year, their secondary, nobody had started a Division I-A game. This year, they're all back, so Sonny Lubick, he is happy of the progress they made last year. Yeah, and you know what? In the two deep, they've only got three seniors, so they've got... 19 of the 22 coming back next year and they're going to be a good defensive football team no matter what happens here today they are going to be a factor oh, yeah. in the whack race because of this defense larry kerr in his fifth year as defensive coordinator done a great job and you know what i think the interesting comment that kerr made to us about uh, that was the fact that he recruits players to play his defense and play for the WAC. I, I think that's real smart, because they want to win the WAC championship. They don't want to beat Nebraska and Colorado. They want to win the WAC first. Because of our low fares to the places you want to go, you can spread your wings whenever you want. You are now free to move about the country. We schedule frequent flights. We go places you want to go. We fly so you can too. You are now free to move about the country. Performance, it's my job. You need the right technology. You need the right skills. You need the right equipment. You need the right gasoline. And you need the right motor oil. You need to use your 9-iron. Good thing he can drive. Sit go, says. Go. Bodies at rest tend to stay at rest. Bodies at motion tend to get thirsty. Now pay attention. Get thirsty, get Gatorade. Get Gatorade, get Gator points. Get Gator points, get Big 12 gear. When you get Big 12 gear, you tend to get noticed by members of the opposite sex. A kind that would otherwise spit in your direction. I've seen it. It happens. So, get Gatorade, get Gator points, get Big 12 gear. 53,416 in attendance at Folsom Field. have seen Colorado come back from a 14-7 halftime deficit to lead by a couple of touchdowns. And a guy that had some pretty good games here on the field as a player is with Jim Knox right now. Yeah, you recognize this guy, Darian Hagan, the former Colorado Buffalo quarterback, now with the Alumni Association, and Darian has the Centennial Cup. Darian, what is this cup all about? Centennial Cup is all about the winner. It is a game, it's a big game, CU, CSU. The winner keeps the trophy, gets the bragging, bragging rights to the state, 
It's a big time. Uh, CU's going to keep it for the last eight years. This is the 10th year we're going to keep it. Hey, go Buffs. It looks like Colorado will keep the trophy this year. Also, how serious are they about Bol in Boulder, Colorado, about their football team? Well, what is this all about, Darian? This trophy here, I work for the Alumni C Club. That's former uh, letter winners. This trophy here is for the former letter winner who gives the most support to the university. The best tailgater of the game, it says. Exactly. This, per this person here who gets this trophy here gives uh, time and support. Okay, and I asked Darian what the best criteria for that is, winning the best tailgater of the game. He said just a loud mouth. Loud mouth. Loud mouth. Ron? I thought it was going to be food. I volunteered to be a judge. Hessler is pressured, gets it off intended for Stiggers overthrow, but John Hessler took a big-time hit. You know, Rick Neuheisel told us a hysterical story about John Hessler. He was criticized when he took over a couple of years ago, and one person on national television said, he's going to get knocked out in this game. Hessler takes a hit from Cedric Jones, knocks the air out of him, would not come out of the game. Neuheisel calls a timeout. He runs over, and he says, why didn't you come out? He goes, because that guy would have been right. <laughs> the guy on national TV, absolutely. Who will remain nameless. Yeah, but you know, you got to like the poise of this guy and his maturity, and he knows he's a focused guy that knows what he wants out of life. you got to really like him. Seven for seven coming into that pass here in the second half. Incomplete, no penalty. Intended for Tennyson McCarty. Well, that looked like an uncatchable ball, which is why good pass call. interference was not called. And I think that's a good call by the officials, who I believe are doing a fine job here today of controlling this football game and making the proper calls. I don't think Rick Neuheisel agrees with it, but... <laughs> yeah. Well, I think he's uh, getting on John Hessler about it. Yeah. That goes back to what I was talking about. He really treats those quarterbacks tough. And he was yelling at Hessler because he didn't agree with the guy he threw to. His read should have taken him to another receiver. And that's exactly what Rick is telling him right there. Well, at times, Hester will go to the line with two plays. Here comes the rush. The kick is away, and we'll have a roughing the kicker penalty call. It's a moot point for Jeff Turner. Everybody in Colorado State, I think, got a piece of well, that one. Yeah, but, you know, they should have blocked it. But the yeah. skill of blocking a kick is very difficult. And so many times... You see a guy miss the punt and rough the kicker. That was a horrible stat to begin the thing, which allowed everybody to get there. But this ball should have been blocked. The thing wobbles back, obviously. But you got to run through the ball. Don't jump up in the air. Run through it if you're a guy coming off the corner to block a punt. Now take that from an old special teams coach, Ron. <laughs> you got to run through and catch the ball with your hands. Don't jump up in the air. Now the penalty will move the ball up to the 43-yard line. And Colorado will retain possession, so John Hessler will have a chance to redeem himself. You know, for coaches, those are just killers because you stop them, and then it just continues to drive. And, you know, it's not an ignorant penalty. It's an aggressive penalty, but they just kill you when it continues to drive after you stop them. First and 10 for the Buffs, leading by a couple of touchdowns, 11.45. Marlon Barnes has some running room. First and 10 for Colorado. He's able to get up close to the first down before Myron Terry, the heart and soul of the defense at Colorado State, brings him down. Now you're going to see the, now you're going to see the University of Colorado start to try to wear down the Colorado State defensive front. They want to start running the ball behind their big guys on the right side, especially Melvin Thomas, the right guard. It's a good job by Barnes to getting outside and making somebody miss. He's got to get his pads down a little bit more there so he can pick up an additional couple yards. But the offensive line right now of Colorado is starting to wear down the defensive exactly. front of Colorado State. Well, he didn't quite get to the first down. Second and inches. Hessler stepping up, throws it right over the middle, passes complete, wide open, Chris Anderson. Down to the 25-yard line of Colorado State. You know, that was a good play, but it's amazing because it shows the impatience sometimes of Rick Neuheisel. Well, here it is, second in inches, and a lot of coaches will say, hey, that's a waste down. And yes, it is a waste down, but if you're trying to establish your running game, pound that baby up in yep. there and knock people down. Use up the clock a little bit and save that play when you're playing Texas A&M or Michigan next week. Of course, they go to Michigan next week. Rick Neuheisel, 9-1 on the road as a head coach. 
might remember three years ago, Cordell Stewart to Michael Westbrook, the Hail Mary pass. Here comes the reverse. Colorado State didn't buy it. Did a nice job staying at home. Marcus Stiggers on the carry, and we have a player down. You know, I loved what Rick Neuheisel was talking about when we asked him, why are you guys so good on the road? He said, because we love big games, and we think it's a great experience to go into Michigan, to go into a place like Nebraska or, or wherever it is, and play in front of a crowd, and everybody hates you. He says, we wear right. black, and he said, everybody's booing us. We think it's part of the college experience. And that guy right there, he put the F word back in the football fun. Oh, he boy. likes to have fun, but he can be a tough guy, as we talked about. And I'll tell you, it's not all him. He's got a good staff, and Carl Durrell, the offensive coordinator, this guy standing right there, Kennedy Pohl, the running back coach, who took over for the late Ben Gregory, A.J. Kristoff. They have got an outstanding staff here at the University of Colorado. The staff average age is 39. But Rick Neuheisel, you know, I asked him yesterday how he's perceived, and, and he had it pretty much on the, on the mark. He says, I'm perceived as kind of this loose guy. I don't have any rules. And we have found out last year and this year, that's not the case. He is one tough cookie, and he's also a very smart football coach. Yeah, he's a smart man is what he is because he's a great psychologist with these kids. But like he said, perception is not always reality. Second and 12 now for Colorado. Or for Colorado. Ball on the 27-yard line. Hessler straight back into the flat to Savoy. Side steps one up to the 17-yard line. Rick Neuheisel says, I can't define chemistry, but I know when we have it. And this team definitely has got it. Absolutely. You know, it, it is always going to be a team game. The media and the press are always going to talk about people because they help hype the, the, the game, but the game is a team game. Eleven players having to be in sync to be successful is an ultimate team game performance. And uh, you know, the fact that our kids like one another, that uh, they look forward to the season as a team rather than just for the individual glory, uh, bodes well for our season. Third and two from the eye. First man through the fullback fist stacked up. You know, Rick was talking about that. They've done a wonderful job here of saying it's a we program. But I love to hear coaches talk about chemistry because when they win, Ron, it's good chemistry. But when they lose, it's bad science, believe me. <laughs> I never hear a guy say that. So, you know, I love the word chemistry, but I'm not sure what it means because I know when coaches lose, it's bad science. Well, he knows he's got it. He said, I wish I could describe it, but I can't. Jeremy Aldridge in to kick the field goal. Came in in Nebraska last year, four for four, kicking the football, and that got him the job this year. Spotted at the 25. Snap, the hold is good, and the kick is good. Well, Colorado since 1983, 50 and one, when they score more than 30 points. They are at 31 right now, and they lead by 17. Weekends are for relaxing and spending time with family and friends. But for most homeowners, it's the only time to straighten out personal finances. That's why First Plus is open on the weekends. Every weekend, we're available when you're at home thinking about consolidating bills or financing home improvements. Just call 1-800-510-PLUS. You can apply today right over the phone, and there's no application fees. First Plus takes care of business seven days a week, just like you do. At First Plus, we're working first for you. Call 1-800-510-PLUS. A commodity is something you trade not something you drive the unique mazda 626, mazda 626. sporty engineering oh. incredible style a silky automatic yeah. and responsive power oh. lease for 219 a month mazda 626. I want it. the most class in its class oh. mazda 626 I want it all. lease for 219 a month Turn it up, love to pump, slam dunk In my own eyes, up and down Got to get the taste to get Blue jeans, fly machine, football head Space show, freedom boat
Colorado opened the 1997 season rather sluggishly, but they have come back in a big way, showing why they are ranked in the top 10. How about 24 second half points, and they lead now 31-14. You know, Rick, News New Rick Neuheisel told us the keys for the game, and one of them was holding Colorado State scoring-wise. Yeah, absolutely, and it's 17 points is what he said from a numerical stab standpoint but he also said somewhere in the game we've got to really establish the running game and that's what it looks like they're trying to do here now in the second half next week the buffs go to ann arbor again the kickoff into the end zone this one's going to be brought out a little bit of running room and now a lot of running room before being knocked out of bounds at about the 30 yard line but Darren Hall really paid, paid for it at the end. Well, he paid for it at the end because he made a mistake. He should have kept the ball and downed it in the end zone. Coaches don't want to see that. When it's four or five yards deep, Ron, they tell him to take a knee because what happens, it gives the coverage guys more time to come down the field and beat their guys. I would have, if I was coaching that guy on a special team, I would have yelled at him and said, hey, take a knee in the end zone. He was he, every bit of five yards deep. Yeah, and he, and he pays the price at the end, like you just said. Well, Moses Moreno had a, just a super first half. 9 of 10 throwing the football. Struggled here in the second half. He'll go upstairs again. Steps up in the pocket, and the swarming black jerseys are there to knock him down. Now, Terrell Cade out of San Diego, California, probably the most consistent player on that defensive line, came up with a stop. His fourth sack today, not bad. No, he's a good player, and I'll tell you what he is. He is playing today with a cast on his thumb. He tore some ligaments last week in practice, and he's casted up. And I asked Andy Kristoff if that would affect his pass rush, and he said absolutely not. Meant to say fourth sack for the team for Colorado today. Moreno's little shuttle pass. They get it off as Moreno is hit hard. But it's going absolutely nowhere. But Moses Moreno is holding the right wrist. Boy, did he get stuck on that one. It may have been Kate again. You know, that used to be a great play in college football, but it's kind of lost its oomph a little bit because of what happened just there. The quarterback is unprotected. His blocker is the guy that's going up in front of him, this guy right there, and getting the ball. And he is all by himself left unprotected, and he gets hits like that. I'd be careful if I was Steve Fairchild if I wanted to run that thing again today. Hasn't really been successful today. Hannibal came up with a stop. Third and 14 for the Rams. Look out. Moreno hit again. Pass is incomplete. Ryan Black coming up from that strong safety spot. He is a very quiet young man majoring in finance. His brothers are all in finance. And he said he's embarrassed by all the attention he's getting for preseason honors. He says, I've kind of always been the underdog. I like it that way. But you know what he is? He, he's a throwback football player also. He just wants to come, like he said, bring his lunch pail every day to practice, do his job, go home. Doesn't want to talk to the media, doesn't want to talk to TV people except for us, and just <laughs> play football. you got to love a guy like that. Now Colorado State here in the second half. Five drives, two interceptions, and three punts. Preston Luce has been busy. Wobbly kick, Troutman from the 38. Stuck at about the 43. 6.25 to play in this football game. And Colorado has control of it by 17. Stay with us. More to come from Colson Field. something to do in Denver, get the Rocky Mountain News Weekend Special, Thursday through Sunday for just 40 cents a week. The Rocky Mountain News Weekend Special, four days, 40 cents. Call 1-800-892-MUSE. If you live here, you get it. Pizza Hut's a free pizza for Ken Griffey Jr. I'll take it. I'll run it over to Junior. Mm, ooh, I'll take it. I'll, mm, take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Supreme. Mm. Here's your pizza. Hey, hey, hey. 
Look at all these toppings. Pizza Hut's new Supreme Pizza with six very generous toppings. Now with everything from fresh sliced mushrooms to meteor pepperoni. Hey, hey! It's only $8.99. And now get a second for only five bucks. For delivery in Metro Denver, call 751-1111. <laughs> All right, you guys, we are busting out of here. This is a reenactment of what we think happened at 720 South Colorado in Denver. The Colorado Lottery is offering a reward of up to $10,000 if you can catch these deuces. But please, be careful. The deuces have been known to be wild. Watch out, dog! The Deuces Wild Game from the Colorado Lottery, the most dangerous <laughs> game ever. week, a battle of the borders as Kansas hosts Missouri in the oldest rivalry west of the Mississippi. Last year against the Jayhawks, halfback Brock Olivo rushed for 166 yards, including three touchdowns in the Tigers' 42-25 victory in Columbia. Meantime, quarterback Corby Jones had a career-high 289 yards of total offense. Missouri visits Kansas next week at 11.30 Central on the Big 12 Game of the Week. Well, Moses Moreno had uh, a couple of good hits there in that last series, even twisted a knee there at the end. He is on the sideline. He had such a, a, an excellent first half. Struggled here in the third and the fourth quarter as Troutman crosses the 45. Jim Knox, what do you have for us? Ron, I tell you what, that Colorado Buffalo defense has really beaten up Moses Moreno. And we, we told you earlier in the game, he had those two huge, huge gashes on his passing hand. Also, he has a hurt wrist, not to mention the twisted knee he just sustained. But Moses told me he will return to the game. He's got to get ready for next week as they travel to Utah State. You know, sometimes sacks are misleading. Everybody knows about sacks, but the more you hit a quarterback, the more you knock him down, the more or less likely he is to stay in that pocket and throw the ball down the field. Keep hitting him if you're a defensive guy. And Colorado State does not have an off week this year. He doesn't have a chance to heal up. Hessler completes the pass over the 50 into Colorado State Territory. Tennyson McCarty, here is a young man that's got degenerative arthritis in his toes. He wasn't able to practice two a days, practice one of every two days. I love the way Carl Durrell, the offensive coordinator, described him. You asked him, what, what does he remind you of? And he said, a true warrior. Here's a guy that plays hurt all the time, never complains, a team leader, and a tough guy. His first catch today sets up a third down and three situation. Ball on the 49-yard line. Hessler, quick drop, throws it out to the flat. It was short hopped, incomplete. Well, he wished he had that one back because that was a gimme. I mean, the wide receiver was wide open. It looked like he short-armed the ball. Stiggers was the intended receiver, and Hessler will have to go off to the side as Colorado will be forced to putt. Let's do a little uh, scorecard on Mr. Hessler. First half, not very good even. Rick Neuheisel said second half, much more under control. And again, it goes back to the fact that I talked about before, I still believe only throwing 23 passes a year ago created some rust in his body, and it just takes time to get used to playing competitively again. Jeff Turner set to receive the punt. He'll take it at the 13, crosses the 20, and that's as far as he will be able to go. And even though it may have been a shaky start for John Hessler, I'll tell you what, I think he is going to be better than the guy they had last year come the end of this season. Well, you know, coaches say you make the most improvement as a football team and a quarterback from week one to week two. Obviously, Colorado State is playing a, a better opponent this week, but I think they've played better this week than they did last week against Nevada Reno. But look for Colorado to do the exact same thing. Exactly. To play better next week against the University of Michigan. There's just so many times you can beat up on each other in practice. You gotta see somebody else with another jersey. 439 to play in the ball game. Moreno will keep it on the ground. Up to the 25, to the 26 is David Washington. Called his name a lot early on. Not much in the second half as Aaron Marshall makes the stop. The junior out of Chicago, Illinois. You know, you wonder if this is a message now from Colorado State to say, hey, let's get out of here. 
with a loss at 31 to 14. Because a lot of teams have come into this situation, Ron, run no huddle, run a shotgun, try to move the ball, score as quickly as you possibly right. can. So it'll be interesting to see here what Steve Fairchild and Sonny Lubick decide to do. Well, they've got two wide outs to the left on second and five. Colorado show electric coming. They keep it on the ground. No Washington tries to bounce to the outside. No room. Well, Colorado State's keys to victory. We talked about early on. State close early. They did score at least 10 points on special teams. They got nothing. Now, you know, and again, I, I think Colorado is better on special teams because of the emphasis. And quite frankly, Colorado State just didn't make anything happen. If I were them, I told this to Sonny the other day, I come after a punter all the time in an opening game because of some of the mechanics and the timing aren't finely tuned. Third and three for Sonny Lubick's troops. Closing in on three minutes to play in the ball game. The quick look over the middle. Pass is complete. Goodbye. Darren Hall, the 5'11 sophomore out of San Diego, California. You see, that's what I was talking about. Throw the ball. You can make a big play. Because all they wanted to do on that play, it was third and three, was pick up the first down. Because all it was was a three-step drop and a slanting pattern that he did a great job of avoiding the tackler. And then he ran after catch. But do it on first down. You get yourself right back in the middle of this football game. Boy, did he turn on the afterburners, though, after he made that catch? And I'll tell you, that's a statistic they should keep in the NC2A rack. Run after, after catch. catch. I think I saw it's a five-yard pass, but that just turned into a long touchdown. But give the credit to the receiver who caught the pass and ran with it. Rack statistics. R-A-C. Let's get it. Let's get it into the NC2A next year. I agree. Especially, 71 yards. Excuse me, Ron. Especially with fast guys like Hall and some of these receivers that Colorado State and Colorado have. As you can see, it's a three-step drop. He drills it, he catches it, he tucks the ball into his left arm, and he burns it down the sidelines. And, and Colorado looked like they were in a zone defense there. That, that was not man-to-man -man coverage. Well, he's had only two catches today, but they were 61 and 71 yards. Moreno, he knows he wished he would have done that about uh, an hour ago. Not real happy for a guy. Now, here's an isolation on Black. See, they're in a zone defense. He's playing there. He's got to come over the top and make that tackle because the corner is in a rolled-up position. But you know what? Ryan Black is not used to playing deep like that. He's a guy that plays around the line of scrimmage all the time. And when you ask him to go back like that, it's almost foreign country. And I know that sounds dumb to say it, that it's foreign country for safety to play deep. Yep. But in this style of defense, it is. He's a line of scrimmage or around the line of scrimmage type of player. Al Hall pulls Colorado State within 10 inside of three minutes. Well, Damon uh, Wheeler was really beaten on that play. The quarterback number two, he's the fastest of the quarterbacks, but He's got to have some help. Well, he's got to help with the safety over the top. Like I said, Wheeler was rolled up, and he was playing a flat zone area. He's a corner that was responsible for the flat. Now we're going to see an interesting situation. The old onside kick. Oh, yeah. We got and, the good hands people up the And the good the hands line. people from Colorado are on the receiving team. When you see a bunch of guys with single-digit numbers on their jersey, all in the front line and some in the second line. Right into the hands of Colorado. Darren Cheverini right into his hands, and then we have some friendly dancing. Most of these guys, there's the flag. Most of these guys played a lot of high school football against each other. They know each other off the field. A couple of Colorado players even work out at Colorado State in the summertime. And you know what, Ron? There are 14 players on both teams that know each other from San Diego. Colorado's San, ball recovery. San Diego has been a pipeline for both Colorado State Colorado. and Colorado. Colorado with a personal foul called on them. Rick Neuheisel making sure everybody steps back. You know, we've seen John Hessler the whole way. We were really talking to Rick Neuheisel if, about his backup. Jeremy Weisinger out of Uvalde, Texas, was supposed to be the backup for Hessler this year, but he dropped a weight on his foot. Now he's got a screw in his ankle. He's not going to be able to play till October. They've got Adam Bledsoe, a redshirt freshman, as the backup. 
Drew Bledsoe's brother. But still, if number seven goes down, they're going to have to change their offense a lot. Yeah. And you know the interesting thing about Adam Bledsoe? He's already made history here at the <laughs> University of Colorado. He is the tallest quarterback in the history of the University of Colorado football. That's amazing to me. 6-4. Washington, BYU knotted up at 7. This is only the fourth drive of the second half for Colorado. But they've turned it into a lot of points as Troutman tries the right side. He's upended after crossing the 30 down to about the 28-yard line. You know, I think about Hessler, too. We talked about how great of an athlete he is. He went out to Coors Field where the baseball team plays, obviously. He goes to this pitching machine, doesn't even warm up, throws 86 miles an hour. And he was recruited as a baseball player. Could have played baseball at Arizona, he said. But he said Rick Neuheisel was the man he wanted to be tutored by. That's interesting. And, and then he also made the comment if he worked on it, he could throw the ball 95 <laughs> miles an hour. And he didn't blink when he said it. Well, he and his coach yesterday after practice were having a throwing contest. Rick had about a 15-yard start, tried to throw it 50 yards, and did. Hessler took a one-step start and did. He's got a gun. Two minutes left to play in the ball game. Troutman spins away close to the 20 and a first down. You know, you can talk about the, the youthfulness of Rick Neuheisel. I'll bet you he can outthrow any head football coach in the United <laughs> States in Division 1A. I, I'll agree with that. And he could probably out-golf him. He's probably like a two-hand he got, too. Well, both teams with a couple of timeouts remaining, but it's probably a moot point as we move inside a 150. You know, we talk about Rick Neuheisel. He, he's a, a real deep, deep, intelligent man. We'll get back to him in a minute. On first and 10, ball on the 21-yard line. One and a half to play here in the fourth. Down to the 17-yard line. You know, if you had to describe head football coaches of the 90s. I think this guy would come to mind. When he interviewed for the head coaching job here at the University of Colorado, he said, hey, I've got a vision where we should be going. We don't, I don't want to maintain right. what Bill McCartney did, and he did a great job, obviously, Bill McCartney, but this guy said, I want to take this to the next level. He said, I might not be able to. We might go right downhill. He said, but I don't want to stay the same. And I thought that was a great statement by him. And I, I thought the University of Colorado did a, the right thing in hiring this man as their head football coach. Well, 10 and 2 in consecutive seasons. Hessler looks up at the clock, has three to snap it, 38 left in the ballgame. Troutman keeps it on the ground, bounces outside down to the 15, or Marlon Barnes down to the 15. Clock inside of 29, and that might be the last play, depending how the officials play it, and it will be. Well, I think they're going to have a chance, Colorado, to evaluate their running game after this game today. That's going to do it. Rick Neuheisel doesn't want him to snap it again. Both teams heading to the middle of the field. Sonny Lubick along with Rick Neuheisel. They are friends. Rick Neuheisel was even on Sonny Lubick's coaching show this week. They both have great respect for each other. You know, it's interesting. You look at Sonny Lubeck, he's a guy from Montana. You look at Neuheisel, he's an L.A. guy. Lubeck's old-fashioned, Neuheisel's the guy of the 90s. Rick is an offensive guy, Sonny's a defensive guy. Lubeck acts like the guy next door. Neuheisel acts like he's a star in the media. Yep. Two completely opposite people, but yet both outstanding, well-respected football coaches that are just great people, and I think they've done a marvelous job at their respective programs and put together outstanding staffs, and both universities should be very happy that they have these two men as their head football coaches. Well, Rick Neuhausel is going to be presented the cup, and he'll hold it for at least one more year as the Colorado Buffaloes overcome a 14-7 halftime deficit. They got their first win of the year thanks to that man. 31 21 is the final. Yeah, I know about performance. You need the right technology. You need the right equipment. You need reliability. You need the right gasoline. And you need the right skills. You need to trim the bushes. Sitco says go.
21 is the final. The Buffaloes win game number one of the 1997 season. Jim Knox is with the winning coach, Rick Neuheisel, right now. Yeah, smiling Rick Neuheisel. I don't know what you said at halftime, coach, but you may want to bottle that speech because whatever you said, this team came into the second half and just dominated. Well, we played very aggressive in the second half. I, I mentioned to him at halftime, throughout every season, there are going to be times when the opponent makes you, st stares you right in the eyes. And uh, we play a tough schedule year in, year out, so we've got to make sure we've got a team that doesn't blink. And I don't think we did. I think we looked internally, found something from within, played really well. Rashidi gets that interception to start the second half. Offense started to click a little bit. But we got a lot of work to do before next week. Yeah, you got to be pleased. The offense really showed what they can do in the second half. Also, the two interceptions, that was a big plus. Well, when we play well, we're pretty good. But uh, we obviously have a lot of work to do, and it's great to get a first game under your belt. Obviously, they're a quality team, and, and to come away with a win is all we wanted. Okay, looking ahead to Michigan next week, what do you expect? Now we can. <laughs> now you can. Uh, well, you know, expect a great program to play well. Uh, uh, they'll have some first game stuff going on, which will, which will be a little bit more difficult for them uh, as it was for us today. But, you know, when you play Michigan at Michigan, you got your hands full. All right, best of luck next week in Ann Arbor, Coach. Right. What a game. Ron, take it. All right, Jim Knox, Colorado, the most road wins in Division 1A the last nine years. Rick Neuheisel's 9-1 and one on the road plays Michigan next week it's gonna be a big game well the big player today in the second half especially was the big receiver we talked about number 80 Phil Savoy and here you see Heswick just thread the needle on a skinny post down on the goal line now here you see Savoy run underneath a, a, a seam pattern out on the outside there one heck of a throw but this guy is an outstanding outstanding receiver he is our Dr. Pepper player of the game with five receptions, 71 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and he's going to talk to Jim Knox. Yeah, here is 